It's that time again, it's the Super Staff Roundup, and today we're tackling episodes 99 through to 106. So jumping in with 99, it is a Toei Animation Philippines and Osamu Ishikawa episode. The first half is where you'll find most of the Filipino corrections, and Takeo Ide corrects almost all of their work here. I'm pretty vocal about my general dislike of Ide's style, but some of his work here is actually fairly appealing. I don't know whether he's just growing on me, but a lot of his work across the episodes we're covering today is very nice. Unfortunately, nice art doesn't fix iffy movement. In particular, the scenes with Batamo are kind of lacking. Considering the quality of episode 33, I'm starting to think Batamo is cursed to be forever badly animated. Thankfully, breaking up this streak of Toei Phil's work is Naoki Tate, who animates a small scene of Gohan stepping in to save Krillin from Diem. Despite the scene also being corrected by Ide, you can still see Tate's trademark hands and, of course, his recognisable movement and effects. Before the first half ends, there's a scene of Android 18 beating down Shosa, and even though the movement isn't that interesting, the effect shapes are really nice and the final kick she launches has some really cool perspective. I'm thinking the scene might have come from Chu Yong Sir just based on some of the line work here. Heading into the second half, the quality ramps up as Futoshi Higashide comes in with the highlight of the episode. From the moment the characters clash, we can see his meaty effects that we last saw back in episode 88, and we've also got a bunch of really exaggerated shots as 18 and Krillin start playing ping pong with Shosa. The scene wraps up and I can't move on without pointing out just how awesome the shot of 18 is. Next up, we have the clash between Krillin and Majora animated by Chi Yong Sir. The initial looped frame sequence is fairly rudimentary, but the smith from Majora's clothing really help elevate the scene above what it really deserves. None of Chu's work here is particularly noteworthy, but Krillin flipping away from the blast displays Chu's distinctive and highly detailed smoke that we saw last episode too. 99 was a lot of fun, but unfortunately we now have to move on to episode 100, which if I'm being honest is a pretty big reason why my interest in Super died for a little while, and as a result, why this video took so long. Oops. So episode 100 is pretty much a solo episode from Yoshitaka Yoshima, but as has become the norm, the second key animators clean up a huge number of shots, leaving only a few instances where Yoshima's iffy style shines through. This is a pretty nice way of going about things, since Yoshima's not really a bad animator, he just typically keeps things restrained due to the time constraints of solo episodes. As a result, there's a reasonably nice rotation scene in the first half that's been finished up by a second KA. It's nothing too noteworthy, but I think it demonstrates what I mean fairly nicely. The real meat of the episode, however, comes from the only other key animator here, Atsushi Nikaido. He animates the fight between Goku and, uh, Broly? Kale? and it's probably one of the strongest cuts in the tournament as of writing this video. The reference to the Avengers towards the start is a nice deviation from Super's typical action, packed with absurd smears and I love the look of the smoke in the background. The rest of the cut is pretty good too, packed with a good few flips, explosions and even a quick impact frame. Honestly, I cannot stand this episode, I cannot believe it was the 100th episode of the show and I cannot believe it killed my interest for so long, but at least it looked okay, sort of. But let's move on to episode 101, the first half is outsourced to Tsutomo Ono and his team, and it's pretty limited in terms of its animation. The only particularly interesting sequence comes from Shin Young Soon, who animates Muton Roshi's attack against the Preacho. The animation, as I said, is quite limited, but it's well drawn, and the effects are as strong as we've come to expect from Shin. Takio Ide corrects a few shots here too, and as I mentioned earlier, his work's a lot more appealing in this arc. This shot of Vegeta in particular definitely struck a chord with me. It's super nice. As the second half begins, we get a surprise visit from Kenotsuka, and of course, like all of his work on Super, aside from the opening, it's incredibly conservative compared to his typical output on other shows. At the very least, it has a fantastic impact frame, and he displays his finesse as an animator by producing some seriously dynamic drawings in in spite of the limited movement. The next noteworthy scene comes from the supervisor of this second half, Shuichiro Manabe. He animates Kale breaking out of the sphere alongside the joint beam struggle. His effects look nice in places, but unfortunately Toei's post team made some pretty questionable choices when it came to colouring these scenes, and frankly I think the twist to colour the beams really ruined the scene. 
I enjoyed this episode, but I expected a lot more from Minabe himself, especially after such a strong appearance back in episode 93. On to episode 102, and we're hit by bank animation, the episode. Not only has Tate's henshin been repurposed for all of the magical girls, but the script itself is very much designed around reusing animation, since 17 interrupting the sequence gives them an excuse to repeat the entire thing. Not only this, but the scenes of Hellas animated by Chu Yong Se are reused over and over and over again. We've also got a scene with Vegeta vs. Rubrian repurposed from the opening and extended by Kenji Miyuma. This first half is really just packed to the brim with bank. The second half isn't packed with great animation either, but it's mostly free of bank and is really elevated by an incredible storyboard. Despite the limited movement, the creative angles on show make the fight feel far grander than it really is. It's really smartly done. Masato Mitsuka is absolutely one of the strongest new directors working on Super. Before we move on, I do have to mention the scene where Seventeen sits up. It's so smooth, it's so uncharacteristic for Super, and I love the frenetic close-up. So on to 103, and we have the debut of our first Tiger Mask supervisor, Yasuhiro Namatame. Since the show finished, we've actually gained quite a few Tiger Mask guys, but mostly as key animators. Gaining another supervisor only extends the rotation times for everyone else, which is, of course, hugely beneficial to the schedule. I wish I could be really positive about their style, but there's nothing that actually stands out since almost everything has been corrected by Ide. The animation is fairly okay here. Futoshi Higashide is by and large the star of this first half. He animates a great little sequence between Goku and Rosie and Seventeen and Rubrian. From the very get-go you can see the return of those meaty effects we spoke about earlier as the characters clash, which then leads quite nicely into the highlight of the first half, where Goku dodges Rosie's attacks and plants a load of key balls around her before blowing her away. Higashide's timing is so distinctive, there's a fluidity to his movement that's almost contradictory, it feels grounded, yet it's the type of thing that's only possible in a cartoon. It speeds up and slows down in all the right places. It's a shame that his presence on this arc is far smaller than what we saw in the future Trunks arc, but considering everything he did there, maybe he deserves a break? The rest of the half is unfortunately pretty weak. The curse of Botamo returns, his sequence with Gohan is animated very, very poorly, but thankfully he does get eliminated, so that is the end of that. With the second half comes Naoki Tate's turn to supervise, and he goes pretty damn wild. But before we touch on his animation, I actually want to talk about his art for a second. Tate's style can be pretty challenging to the average viewer, it's incredibly different, and with Super's punishing time constraints in the past, it's been pretty rough here and there too. The reason I bring this up is because the show is in a significantly better place than it was, and it really shows in Tate's art in this arc. His drawings here still show zero interest in adhering to Yamamuro's designs, instead opting to reinterpret Toriyama's style in a softer way, but they're far more polished than before. Gohan and Piccolo in particular look absolutely great, I really really love his approach here. It goes hand in hand with his animation in this episode. His style is very typical of the type of action associated with Dragon Ball here. Lots of flurries interspersed by huge impacts, but of course, he makes it his own. You've got flowing fabrics, smeary punches, extended limbs, cool effects, and great facial expressions. One of the more interesting parts is where Piccolo gets punched. The way he falls backwards is really interesting. His arm sort of follows the line of action as he hunches over, and then as he swings back around, it meets that same line again. Piccolo gets pushed back as he fires his bars too, which is a pretty neat detail. Strangely, his animation is broken up by a little scene from Yukihiro Kitano. It is possibly one of the weirdest things at seeing a drawing that's part Kitano and part Tate correction. It's not a particularly exciting scene as expected, but it was so weird that I felt like I had to bring it up. This episode to me marks the start of a run of mostly very good episodes. This tournament has been a little episodic with not too much focus on teamwork, so it's nice to see that change from here on out. Episode 104 brings about the return of Studio One Pack, who we last saw do some stellar work on episode 95. Typically, One Pack episodes are supervised by Yui Kinoshita with assistant work from Jihiro Tanaka, but in this episode Tanaka is taking the lead and Kinoshita isn't on the episode whatsoever. 
I imagine Kinoshita was probably tied up elsewhere, but part of me hopes that they finally notice that Tanaka is significantly better at drawing Dragon Ball than Kinoshita. Much like 95, One Pack's output here is pretty strong as a solid cut where Hit and Dispo dash at each other towards the beginning that I almost thought was Akshashi Nikaido the first time I watched this. It's packed with cool smears and some amazing looking impact frames. I'm wondering if it was maybe someone like Aki Yamauchi who was high up in the credits list both here and on 95. Maybe he was responsible for that Shida-esque cut back then too. I'm not too sure, but someone has talent, that is for sure. Hiroyuki Itai takes over for the second half and his corrections dominate pretty much every scene. There were only four in-house key animators including Itai so it's not too surprising that there's a greater focus on impressive stills than movement here. Much of the action is repurposed from the first half or even as far back as the Universe 6 arc, albeit partly redrawn. The highlight in terms of new content seems to come from Atsushi Nikaido and possibly Jin Inaba, who animates the scenes around Goku transforming into blue and dashing at the Pride Troopers. There's a killer impact frame, some nice background animation, and it's all topped off by Itai and the second key animator's strong corrections. This episode isn't particularly animation heavy as you can see, but it's wonderfully directed and sits as one of my personal favourites of the tournament in terms of pure entertainment. On the other end of that scale is episode 105, one of if not my least favourite episodes so far. Supervised by Toei Philippines and Hirotakani, this episode has essentially nothing of note to mention. You can make arguments for the marginally okay Kamehameha towards the end, but it's ultimately a nothing episode, and I'm kind of surprised surprised considering Shuichiro Minabe was the top credited key animator here. Skipping right over that then, let's touch on episode 106, which is one of the most baffling episodes of the tournament from a production standpoint. In the preview scene at the end of 105, there were indications that the episode would be partly supervised by Yuichi Kurosawa, but the quality was so far below the usual output of both him and this arc that many of us weren't sure it was actually him. Despite Shimanuki having a few nice shots in there, there were some really ugly looking drawings with his traits too. The final episode was fortunately saved by Miyako Suji's career directions as the chief animation supervisor, all of the poor shots from the NEP were fixed and her touch can now be found throughout the vast majority of the episode. Poor Kurosawa can only be found in a few measly shots. I'm not entirely sure what happened here but there were six external studios involved and a few freelancers so I don't know if they maybe ran out of time or there were communication issues but this definitely is the most troubled episode of the tournament despite the final animation on display looking mostly fine. I think that speaks volumes about Super's production these days. Things can go absolutely horribly wrong, but the output is still perfectly acceptable when it hits our screens. There isn't much exemplary animation in this episode either, but it is a great showcase of Masahiro Shimanuki's work. He was the top credited key animator for this episode and his animation can be found in abundance throughout the second half. Goku and Vegeta running across the arena and charging up their special attacks is about as Shimanuki as they come. From the character art to the classic debris, it's all him. I don't see Shimanuki ever making a full return to form, but if this is the best he can be, then I'm okay with that for these types of episodes. Lastly, before we move on to the next episode, it's worth noting that despite Futoshi Higashide and Kenji Miyuma's presence, they delivered nothing particularly interesting here, so again, I think that speaks volumes. With that said, let's touch on the best episode of the tournament as of this video, episode 107. The success of this episode hinges almost entirely on its storyboard and direction, yet it's one of the most confusing aspects of its production. On paper, one of Super's two series directors, Tatsuya Nagamine's storyboarded thing, while the other, Ryota Nakamura, directed it with assistance from up-and-coming talent Megumi Ishitani. However, before the episode aired, Ishitani tweeted a really mysterious message about how the extent of her work couldn't be credited due to various circumstances, but the way it was phrased strongly hints at having storyboarded the first half and possibly directed the entire thing. While I don't really understand what sort of circumstances would lead to her only receiving an assistant credit, it's certainly not unusual for veterans to nurture young younger talents. If this episode was mostly her doing, then she's absolutely one of the best working at Toei right now. So let's actually talk about what made this episode so strong in these areas then. 
When fans talk about cinematography and choreography in animation, what they really mean is the storyboarding, and it's unbelievably strong here. The opening scenes of Frost talking to Champa are composed wonderfully, with the direction taking over to insist on striking lighting. This is followed up by an interesting transition from the past to the present, too. As the Grand Priest looks over the arena, we see things from a really unusual angle, with the camera placed behind the Zeno seating area. It hits pretty much all the key elements of a good composition, with in lines towards the subject and the subject sitting on one of the thirds. Later on, when Roshi is secluded and hiding from Frost, the director chose to cut out the music and the camera changes positions erratically, from one scene that shakes as we hear nothing but Frost's ominous dialogue, to even dropping below Roshi for a really unique and unsettling angle. It creates such a strong atmosphere and builds essential tension for what the scene requires. As much as good animation is important, it's the direction and storyboarding that can make or break an episode. While there are some really cool pieces of animation found here, and we will touch on those, there's certainly not anything mind-blowing. It's this masterful direction found throughout the entire episode that makes this Stupa's strongest outing of this arc yet. It's a shame not everyone's this good, but I will take what I can get. So as for the animation, the major highlights are in the first half, and unfortunately identifying them has proved unsuccessful. The first impressive cut is where Maji Kaio starts channeling Luffy and prepping Gear Third's giant pistol. The popping is incredibly satisfying as the fist grows larger and larger. If you freeze frame, you can see the smears drawn to achieve that type of effect look really damn good. As Jiren blows him away, not only do the blast effects look great, but Maji Kaio literally turns into a smear. I love it. There's some nice stuff earlier on where he takes on Dispo 2. Some of the effects shown there are pretty distinctive, but definitely not quite to the same caliber as what we just looked at. In the second half, Ji Young Sir animates the highlight where Vegeta breaks out of the jar. His effects work here is incredibly modern, and I really appreciate being able to see that in Dragon Ball outside of Tate's work. The shapes look so nice, and the arching eyes on Vegeta as the aura clears look so old school. It's definitely up there as one of my favorite Vegeta drawings in the series. I appreciate I haven't even mentioned the supervisors yet. It was led by Osamu Ishikawa and Toei Philippines, but unlike the usual episode structure, Ishikawa's touch can be found throughout. He definitely gave it his all, and despite his inability to draw Vegeta well, everyone else looks good. This was a really special episode, so of course that does mean we have to be hit by a little bit of quality whiplash in the follow-up. Episode 108 is a Yoshitaka Yoshima solo episode through and through, which of course means very limited animation and a whole bunch of second KA cleanup. In fact, you can see Miyako Suji's correction between the NEP and the final episode. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of just how important good supervisors are. There really is nothing to talk about here, so that is it. I appreciate I've become that YouTuber who says he's back and then vanishes again for many months, but episode 100 really did just destroy any interest I had in talking about the series, and it took so long to pull me back in. I hope this extra long video makes up for things. We're trying to create a good schedule now, so bear with me. The special is coming up in a few days. I cannot wait. Look out for a short what we know so far type of video in the next few days, and of course the full breakdown shortly after it airs. Let me know what your favorite episode of the tournament so far is in the comment section below. Drop me a rating if you'd be so kind and I will see you next time.